So, having said, sex is an activity that is supposed to be engaged in only by a married couple. Uh, what are the kind of sexual activities which are illegal? Illegal as in, not for the government of India, illegal for God. <laughs> okay? So, uh, some of the things I will uh, mention briefly because I really don't want to spend a lot of time doing this. Some things will go into some degree of detail. Okay? So, first thing that's forbidden, uh, as a rule, okay, most of the things I'm going to speak from is from the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 18. Okay? This might be a good chapter for you to read and reflect on the coming week uh, by the time you come back on Sunday next. Okay, so Leviticus 18. So, right? So most things I'm going to quote is from the same chapter. So for example, Leviticus 18, 22. You shall not lie with a man as with a woman. It is an abomination. What does that mean? It means sex between two men. <laughs> Yeah? So homosexual acts are sinful. And they are serious sins. So serious that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for this particular sin. That's uh, Genesis 19, full chapter. Okay? Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, do you want any more clarification on this or can I move to the next one? Yeah? God always has scientific reason as well as spiritual reason. Is there anything about this homosexual activity? Can you be, can you ask me in a little bit more detail this question? Yeah. Right. Uh, for every commandment that God gives, yeah. for example, He has uh, given a commandment that uh, there are untouchable animals as well as uh, touchable animals. Those who are clean and unclean. He gave those reasons so that uh, the Israelites are pure and sure. the race will prolong yeah. for the coming of Christ. Okay. That's the reason for segregating unseen and seen animals. Okay. Similarly, for this commandment, sex between a man and a man and a woman and a woman is not possible. Is there any reason behind that? Yeah, sit down. Why it's not possible is because these two things have to be fulfilled for sexual activity to take place. Because of procreation, the child needs father and mother to become father and mother, you need to be husband and a wife. You have a husband, but wife is missing. So anything that doesn't fit into this scheme of things, it's against nature, sinful, and God doesn't permit. That's, that's the basic uh, reason. Is that clear for all of us? Yeah? So just have this as a scheme of things in sense of uh, a, a standard to judge right and wrong. Are you with me? For example, uh, the male sexual organ is designed to penetrate the sexual organ of a woman. To not do is going against God's plan for us. Is that okay? Yeah? Having said that, we should dis distinguish two things. Having a homosexual orientation is not sinful, okay? Are you with me? It means you feel you are homosexual. You, you, you think about boys or if you are a girl, you think about girls you dream of having sex with them and stuff like that, nothing sinful there. Only it is it's sinful to the extent you engage in homosexual acts. We need to keep these two things uh, very, very clear. Are you with me? So the church doesn't call people who have homosexual tendencies as sinful. They're saying uh, the tendencies by themselves are not sinful. You need to deal with it, get healed and move on. But to accept it and to give in to sexual acts, only that would be sinful. You need to distinguish between the two things very clearly. Are you all okay with it? Yeah? Great. Uh, next one is living together. Right or wrong? Why? They are not better than husband and wife. No, no. They are not, not wedded husband and wives. There is no such thing as an unwedded husband. Only if you are wedded, you are a husband. Okay, so this, this gets affected here. So that's illegitimate and sinful. God holds that as sin. Are you with me? Uh, I think you, if you find the book of 1 Corinthians, okay, chapter 7. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2. 
Those who have your Bibles, you can turn. Okay. Now, are you all with me? Those who have your Bibles, turn. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2. But because of cases of sexual immorality, right? Paul says, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. So Paul is basically talking to a group of people, men and women, whose sexual passions are a flame. It's like they're on fire. <laughs> are you with me? And Paul is saying, guys, you're single, be holy, don't give in to sin. These guys are saying, too difficult, Paul, too difficult. You don't know what I'm going through. Are you understanding me? Yeah? Uh, to them, Paul is saying, please, get married. <laughs> Which means Paul is saying, the, the, the legitimate place for sex is marriage. And for no reason can you have it outside it. That's the point of 1 Corinthians 7 verse 2. Are you with me? Okay? Verse 9. Verse 9 is even more beautiful. Okay? Verse 9 has to do with an engaged couple. Okay? An engaged couple is, you know what that is, right? They will exchange rings and promise one another, we will get married. But, at the time 1 Corinthians was written, okay, people thought Jesus is going to come any minute now. Like they tell on God TV. Jesus is coming now, oh, get ready. Okay, so at the time of 1 Corinthians, Jesus was going to come now, so people who are engaged, they are like, if Jesus is going to come now, are you going to get married? So they said, forget marriage, forget everything else, just prepare yourself for the Lord to come. This is the situation. In that position, one married couple says, comes to Paul and says, No, Paul, we can't help it, Paul. <laughs> yeah, you're like so attractive. Uh, what to do, Paul? Yeah, Paul says, Get married. Lord may come tomorrow, but you get married now. <laughs> Are you with me? That's verse 9. Yeah? Get married if you can't control your sexual activities. Okay? But the point is, it's uh, marriage, that's the realm of sex here. Okay? Are you with me? So, if living together is wrong, uh, third one, the natural flow from this is, is premarital sex wrong? Hello? Yes or no? Yeah? Because you are, you, are, you are skipping this stage of marriage, but premarital sex has a bigger consequence, okay? Now, there is a time in your life when you are single. You get uh, married, let's say for us, it's, it happens in the church, after that you become a husband and a wife. Premarital sex is, yeah sure, it's an offense against God. But more than that, it's an offense against your marriage because you are robbing from marriage Yeah? You are robbing from marriage what comes to marriage and you are bringing it out of the realm of marriage and into a realm, single life, where sex does not belong. So you are robbing it from here. Now when I say robbing it, secular research, you can google this if you want to. Secular research will tell you, confirming God's word, if you rob from marriage what belongs to marriage, you may get married to the same person you had premarital sex with. You get married. You know what will happen here? Gone. You won't find the happiness in sex that legitimately belongs to a married couple because you have already taken it out. So the couples who really enjoy sex as God willed it and have a fruitful sexual life post marriage are couples who have not engaged in sexual activity before marriage. Are you with me? You are you're, you're engaged to someone today, three months are over for marriage, tomorrow is the day of your marriage, today 
the boy you are engaged to comes and says, Honey, we are getting married tomorrow. Come, let's do it now. Sin. You are still robbing what belongs to marriage. You are bringing it out. Then you get married. And you are like, hmm, Why is my marriage not fulfilling sexually? You have robbed it. Are you with me? So, 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 uh, this is second research. Google it if you, if you, if you don't uh, believe me. So, this is the dynamics of it. So, be very sure, even if you are engaged, uh, you, you do not get into uh, any degree of premarital sex. We will come to that degree thing later. But as of now, is this clear? So, homosexuality is sinful, living together is sinful. Third one is uh, premarital sex. Any doubts? Sure? If you are shy, write a small piece of note and send it to me. Okay? Then, uh, what else do we have? Okay. This is really cool, okay? In uh, Leviticus 18, uh, for example, for the Jewish mind that wrote the Old Testament, they don't use the word make love or to have sex to refer to the act of sex. Uh, to refer to the act of sex, they'll tell you, for example, do not have sex means do not uncover her nakedness. Okay. Another word is okay. Do not okay, sorry. Uh Ivan is just telling me. Great. Okay? So the Hebrew terms to have sex, one is do not uncover her nakedness. Okay? So this essentially has to do with the removal of clothes. Another one is do not know her. It also means do not know her sexually, do not have sex with her. Now why are these two ways of expressing sexual acts important? You all know what making out is? Okay, making out is boy and girl, they are dating, they just go, they are in the back seat of a car, they hug, they kiss and they do this, they do that, they stop short of uh, full blown sex, but this is called making out. Okay, now don't learn this from me and be inspired. <laughs> okay, but why I'm telling you this is okay. Uh, under premarital sex, making out is also serious sin. It's wrong and you cannot do it because acts of making out is meant and designed by God to lead to full-blown intercourse. Are you with me? Yeah. So that is why when we say do not uncover her nakedness. Do not know her. Know here is to know another person sexually. How do you know people sexually? You touch them, you kiss them, you smell them, uh, you, you, you embrace them. Yeah? That's what we call as making out biblically no. Okay? So, we need to learn to respect people who are our girlfriends, who we are engaged to, who we are courting and not yet married. Okay? <coughs> 